those things. K2 Mind Bender 108. I'm ready to have my mind bent. I thought I would take you for a ride with me this morning. So I test out these geese, so a little soft snow here. So hopefully we can get a little bit of everything on the snow. Oh my god, look at these trips. <laughs> Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. We're here today to take a look at these 2020 K2 Mindbender 108 Ti skis. Um, as you saw from the footage to start this video, I had a really good time testing these skis and we've had some really good snow conditions too. Uh, we're in a really good weather pattern here in Stowe, so we've, we've had quite a few storms in the past couple weeks that's made conditions pretty awesome for these skis. Plenty of soft snow, but also some kind of wind scoured spots. Um, and I think for a kind of free ride all mountain ski like this at 108 underfoot, uh, pretty perfect testing conditions that we've had. Um, so this is pretty exciting stuff. This is a brand new collection for K2 for 2020, um, the Mindbender series. And it's a pretty big line. It, it, it consists of 12 different skis total. Um, six for men, six for women's. Um, and there's a combination of constructions that rely on metal um, as well as constructions that rely more on carbon fiber, um, which we'll talk more about throughout the next, you know, 12 months, the next year or so. Um, but we thought this was a really fun one to kick it off with the 108 Ti, um, the widest ski in the line with metal. Um, so pretty cool new ski. Um, and let's just kind of dive right into it. Um, you may have seen some people the past few months skiing prototype graphics. Um, there was a, a blue graphic as well as a white ski that was kicking around for a while. Um, this is actually the graphic for next season. Um, and we've had this pair in our hands for a few weeks now. Um, and it's been really fun. So let's kind of present the line in general before we go into actual performance. Um, K2 is really emphasizing that they're focused on fun with this ski. Um, and if you look at their catalog, it's really pretty cool. You know, they, they kind of make some blanket statements like, hey, carving turns is really fun. Um, having a powerful ski is really fun. But slashing and smearing and kind of the flickability of a ski is also really fun. Um, and they don't necessarily believe that those kind of two distinct different performance characteristics, the powerful carve and the smeary, slashy turn, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, and I really like that idea. We talk about performance characteristics here a lot and combinations of performance characteristics. And I think it's a notable accomplishment if you can take two performance characteristics on seemingly the opposite ends of the performance spectrum and combine them into one ski. Um, that's a really cool concept and that's essentially the theory here behind these Mindbender skis. Um, but they really focused on fun. Um, these were driven more from a skier's perspective and athlete demands than like an engineer saying, no, we need to do it this way because it's going to create this feel and you're going to like it because I say you're going to like it. Much more the skiers saying, hey, engineers, we want this and this is why we want this. Um, so that's kind of the theory behind these skis, the overall concept um, and some, some cool construction too. We'll, we'll touch on construction and then, and then a quick, quick note on shape. Um, construction's pretty cool. I wanna, I wanna kinda trace how this works. So kind of two important construction techniques to, to consider here. Um, and, and really what, what K2 is trying to do here is custom tailor the amount of torsional stiffness throughout the length of the ski. So in their minds, the tail of a ski doesn't necessarily have to have the same torsional stiffness as the tip of a ski. Um, an interesting concept and, and one that I think is pretty cool. So they have this tightenal Y band. Um, so it, it's really a, a pretty cool concept. Um, and, and you might, as you're watching this, you might think in your head, hey, that's kind of like combining two constructions I've seen in other skis. Um, and the tip of the ski, so the forebody of the ski, 
you have metal along the edges of the ski. So there's metal right there, there's metal right there, it then ends at the top. Um, having metal along the edges like that is designed to deliver high levels of torsional stiffness. So if you're driving the tip of a ski through a turn or into a turn, um, you have a pretty powerful forebody of the ski, precise, powerful feel. Underfoot, the metal is actually full width. So about from there to there, full width metal underfoot um, kind of gives that stable feel that we like right under our bindings. And then in the tail of the ski, the metal is actually only in the middle. Um, so pretty cool concept here, um, opposite basically from the tip and the tail. So in the tip, it's designed to increase torsional stiffness and edge grip and power. And then the tail lets you release the tail edge a little bit easier, wash, skid, slash, smear, whatever you want to call it. Um, easier to release the tail edge than if they were to use metal along the sides of the ski. Um, so that's the overall concept. There's also a power wall. So this red material underfoot um, is an ABS material. So they basically mill out a little bit of the wood core and replace it with that ABS, which again is just kind of boosting stability underfoot. Um, so that's kind of the, the overall concept and the intention of the Mindbender 108 Ti. Um, definitely a really cool concept and, and does it work? I'd say it, it does. Um, kind of two characteristics to this ski. So I skied it in a lot of soft snow and I also skied it on some firm snow days. Um, we'll start with soft snow because that's personally where I started. It was the, the first day I skied it was a, a full on powder day pretty much. Um, and they're really fun. They're, they're, in my opinion, K2 skis have always had kind of a, a fun, playful feel. And this definitely retains that. Um, they're super maneuverable and you can kind of change the way that they feel based on how you're weighting them, even in soft snow. Um, so if you're, if you're skiing a really balanced stance, if you're not driving the, the forebody of the ski, um, really easy to slash and smear and pivot it. Um, but then even in softer snow, if you want to get a more precise turn, say you want to want to actually carve a turn through some soft snow, you basically just initiate more in the in the forebody of the ski and you get a really precise feel. Um, still super flickable. Um, this is a 179, which I guess in, in a ski this width, I'm normally on something slightly longer. Um, I didn't feel like it lacked stability or float. It was more just refreshingly easy for me to ski it, um, which was kind of fun, made, made me feel maybe like a better skier than I actually am. Um, but I think any ski that can do that, that that's, that's a pretty cool feature. Um, so yeah, really flickable at 108 underfoot, you get a good amount of float. Um, they do have a good amount of tip rocker. So we just kind of skipped shape there, but basically tip rocker starts where my right hand is, tail rocker starts where my left hand is. Um, so you know, not a drastic amount, and something that I pointed out in the written portion of this article is it's a little bit less pronounced than what we saw in the Pinnacle collection. Um, there's camber underfoot. It's not super high-rise camber, but it's there. So basically the, the width, um, this kind of smooth early taper and the blunt tip shape, and the rocker, all those things combine to, uh, to give it quite a lot of float. Um, I think for a lot of people out there, this could be your dedicated powder ski. Um, here on the east, you really don't need too much more than this in, in terms of width underfoot for a powder day. Um, and like I was saying, kind of just a really fun mix of performance characteristics in soft snow. So really maneuverable. You can slash and smear turns. Um, but then when you get onto firmer snow, um, you kind of start to, in my opinion, on firm snow, you feel the difference in construction more from tip to tail. So you really can tell on firm snow that you can give the tip a lot more skier input and, and you create a more energetic turn. Um, if you want that like almost race inspired lateral acceleration out of a turn, you do have to give it some skier input. It's not the type of ski, it's not a super short turn radius, so it's not just gonna snap you into a turn. Um, it does like to have some skier input, but 
it doesn't require skier input. So it's kind of the type of thing where the more you give it, the more it responds, but it's not gonna beat you up or punish you if you're not super aggressive. Um, you, can, you can ski it, again, in a balanced position, not driving your tips, and, and it's pretty forgiving. It, it's, it's not like, I think in my mind about skis with two sheets of metal and maybe more camber, um, it's not as demanding as a ski like that um, but you can still get it to make some some pretty powerful turns when you want to. Um, just a really fun ski. This is a little bit wide for an all-mountain ski around here, but I also skied it on a day when we didn't have too much soft snow, or at least the soft snow was harder to find. Um, and I still thought it was really a lot of fun. Um, definitely a directional ski. It's not like a twin tip or anything like that, but I was having a blast just kind of like playing and jumping off natural features. Um, and I think... I think the product guys at K2 would be pretty excited to hear that that's how I was skiing it. Um, I was basically focusing on having fun, um, which is, is kind of what this ski is all about. Um, so that's it. This is the new Mindbender 108 Ti. Um, a lot to cover because it's a new construction and new shape. Um, performance is really cool. Definitely let us know if you have more questions. Um, I can think off the top of my head about a lot of skis that we could compare this to, so let us know if you want to make any comparisons. Um, it's almost like they're combining two different kind of construction techniques from different skis and the tip and the tail. The tip, I will say, feels a lot like pinnacle construction, um, but the shape is a little bit different. Um, and let's end this by saying that unfortunately, or somewhat unfortunately, the pinnacle series is going away. Um, I say somewhat unfortunately because the performance is a little bit different. Um, the Pinnacle series is distinctly forgiving. Um, I think it, it's, it's created a name for itself as being a, a pretty relaxed, forgiving platform. Um, these are still relatively forgiving, but a little bit more ski than those Pinnacles. Um, so definitely encourage you to pick up a Pinnacle while you can. I think those skis are really cool. Um, but next year those will be replaced by these mind benders. Um, so yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Um, we'll definitely continue skiing them. We're going to kind of pass them around through our staff and let different people ski them. Um, one of our employees, Mike, has a prototype of the Mindbender 99 Ti. Um, so you'll see a full review of that in, in the coming weeks or months, probably weeks. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, we're about to get a couple more powder days here at Stowe, so we'll send some people out on the Mindbender, um, hopefully get some footage that we can throw up on social media too. Um, and yeah, please don't hesitate to ask us any questions about these brand new skis. They'll definitely be included in our 2020 ski test. Um, and we will see you guys on the slopes, and fingers crossed that it keeps snowing here in Stowe.